All right, let's pray. Father, Lord, I pray that you be with us now and help us uh, as we look into the scriptures, Lord. And Lord, as we talk about these spiritual gifts, I just pray, Father, that we would understand from the scriptures what you've said about them. Lord, I pray that we would understand the truth of them and that uh, we would not be fooled by that counterfeit, charismatic nonsense that's out there, Lord, that we'd be able to rightly defend the Word of God and show the truth in the Word of God concerning these issues, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, one of the problems today, we're going to talk about charismatic, we're going to talk about the temporary sign gifts, tongues and the charismatic counterfeit. Um, I think it's important to understand that, that issue of tongue speaking. Um, it's one of the, the spiritual gifts that was given, and it was a temporary gift that was given. Okay? Um, and it served a purpose. Uh, we have talked about... Like, turn to Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> turn there, please, and we'll read some verses here. And then we'll read some verses in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. And then, and then we'll get moving here. Uh, for as we have many members, verse number 4, in one body, and all members have not the same office... So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, and he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Now, these are the gifts that we all have today still. All right, these are gifts that are in the body today. Now, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 28. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Amen. The Apostle Paul says he, show, he would show unto them a more excellent way. And what is that? That's love. That's charity. Yep. But, you know, we've identified here, this is going to go right along with our series. The spiritual gifts goes right along with the local church series that we've been talking about. Uh, understanding the local church, and, and now we're going to get into gifts in the body. But I feel like it's important that we, we first talk about those counterfeit gifts and the true spiritual gift, but the fact that it was a temper some of these were temporary gifts that are being counterfeited today. Right, the right. devil always does a cheap counterfeit. Yep. Right. He always does a cheap, showy counterfeit of something true that God has done or that God gave. That's 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 a part of that's who the devil is, all right? It's important that we that we've identified what a church is according to the scriptures. What is a church? It is a local, visible assembly of called out believers, baptized and organized biblically, and we've defined what the body of Christ is, that local New Testament church. So these aren't well gifts in the body means this universal invisible body, mystical body. No it doesn't. It is a local, visible church. Amen. And you exercise the gifts that God has given in a local visible church. That's why people need to be in a church. God has gifted them. If he saved your soul, he's gifted you and you are you have a responsibility to be a member of a church and be able to exercise and use your gifts in the body. Amen. Very important. All right, so we understand what that New Testament church is. And that God wants every believer in that New Test and a local New Testament church. But you know what? It's time we look at those spiritual gifts because that's like the next step in understanding is the spiritual gifts that God gave. And to understand the true from the false, the counterfeit from the real. Because the charismatic movement today and the Pentecostals and, and the Word Faith Movement and all of these people that name the name of Christ... They teach a perversion of Christ's right. gifts. Yep. It is an absolute perversion. And I'm, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to reiterate this a couple times to you, but I will say it to you up front here. We do not have to defend the fact that we, are, we stand opposed 
to their phony gifts. Amen. They are the ones that need to prove that those gifts that they pretend to practice today are the same that are found in the New Testament. Right. Right. And when you examine the gifts that they pretend that they have today with the scriptures, they don't match up. That's right. Amen. Why? Well, because they're trying to do something that ended long ago, yep. that served a purpose long ago that is no longer needed today. We don't need it. And we don't need it because we have the Word of God. Amen. So we'll talk a lot more about that on Sunday when I give a general overview of the of, of kind of the, the counterfeit spiritual gifts. We're going to talk specifically about tongues tonight. And I'm hoping to get through all of this. Uh, I have a lot, and I have a lot of reading, so you're going to have to just bear with me here, all right? And stay with me when I, when I go through this, because there is a lot of stuff, but I, I feel like it's important to give you details of things and for you to understand and read. So a lot of this I took from David Cloud's Way of Life books, some of his books, because they're good. I mean, on this subject, on the charismatic Pentecostal movement and on understanding the gifts and everything else, David Cloud has wrote some of the best uh, material on that and understanding taken from the scriptures line upon line and went through it and it's it's I, I believe that he has he has the right take on them I do disagree with him on the baptism of the Holy Ghost because we believe it's baptism with the Holy Ghost right. and we disagree about that but I do not disagree with his view of the charismatic movement and the gifts I believe he is spot on with that so I can tell you where I disagree with somebody and where I believe they're wrong, and I believe I can prove it wrong, but I also believe there's a lot of good things that he has in here, and I want to help you with some of these things. So we're going to look at certain of these gifts that were temporary. That's the first thing I want you to understand. If you're taking notes or in your mind, if you're trying to remember this, there are there were temporary gifts that were given. They were not all permanent gifts. Not all signs and wonders and miracles were, by the way, if it's a miracle, then it's something that doesn't that happens out of the ordinary. Right. It's not something that's going to happen every week in an assembly all the time. Right. It's God miraculously working, yep. and, and there is a purpose for it. And not by man doing it. That's right, not by man doing it. So uh, David Cloud says this, and, he, and it makes sense here. Let me say first is that I am convinced that there are some details pertaining to tongue speaking that we cannot understand today since the legitimate gift has not been practiced for almost 2,000 years. I agree with that statement. Yep. I, there's some things that are hard to understand. We go through them like, man, it's just, how do I explain this perfectly? And you can't really. Why? Because it's not, it wasn't for us. It really wasn't for us. Yeah. All right? There are many things in Scripture like that, he says. We know almost nothing about the operation of the Urim and Thummim, for example, even though it was mentioned seven passages in the Old Testament. We know that it was something that was kept in the breastplate of the high priest, and it was means whereby the priests ascertained God's will. Beyond this, we know nothing at all. We don't even know what the Urim and the Thummim looked like, and we don't know how they were used to determine divine direction. Why? Because it's not in operation today. We don't need it. Right. It's enough that God listed it, but you're not going to be able... If somebody asks you a question about that, why, I wouldn't waste five minutes on that. I would try to give them just, here's the scriptures that's listed, but there's no explanation, and there's no example of it. Right. There's no example of it for our time. There's no explanation about it. Why? Because it, it's not necessary. It's not important. If God thought it was important, he'd have put it in there. And he'd right. have given you a detailed explanation and prepared you to use that gift. That's right. Right? Or prepared you to use that. But the Bible does say, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Amen. All of it's written for our learning, right. but all of it is not to us in the sense of giving us directions of how to do things. I don't really need to know everything about the high priest's garments that God didn't tell me and some of the things like, I don't understand, like some of the things don't make sense of why they did some of the things they did. And God doesn't give us an explanation of it. But I don't have to know that either. Right? I don't have to know that. Yep. This is a situation that we face in regard to tongue speaking. Even the late 4th century preacher John Chrysostom, he said this in 347 to 407. He made this comment on 1 Corinthians 12 through 14. He said, this whole place is very obscure, but the obscurity is produced by our ignorance of the facts referred to and by their secession, being such as then used to occur, but now, but now no longer take place. 
What did he mean by that? He meant, well, because it doesn't pertain to, we don't need it. It's not around. We don't use that gift anymore. That was a temporary gift that was given to the apostles for a reason. And we'll prove that as we go. Okay? That's what it was for. But listen, you've got people that are so enamored with this. They are taken with this. It's like all, their whole ministry and their whole life is about tongue speaking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Talk, about, talk about majoring on, by the way, talk like that's child's play, by yep. the way. That's yep. kiddie yep. stuff. Yep. Yeah. They're kids. The Bible says that's child's play. Yeah. That's for children. Put it away. Right. Put it away. Thus, while there are questions in regard to tongues that I cannot answer with complete confidence, I don't believe that I am obligated to answer every question. We are obligated to form our doctrine on this or any other subject upon the teaching of the clearest scriptures, and the most obscure ones will take care of themselves. Amen. That's a true principle. Whatever's clear in the scripture, it's like eternal security. It's clear all the way through the scriptures. Amen. You take some obscure passages, and then you try to raise doubts in people's minds. Yep, all right. So you've got to overthrow three quarters of the Bible, or, or, or almost all the Bible, for a few verses that you don't understand. Right. Yep. yep. That's what they do. Yep. That's what they do with tongues, the same thing. Yep. Yep. The false teacher takes exactly the opposite approach. He built his pet doctrines upon relativity, relatively obscure and difficult passages while ignoring and overthrowing the clearest ones. The charismatic will hang his doctrine of a private prayer language. We're going to talk about that. Composed of unintelligible mutterings. <laughs> Upon 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 15. Even though that is a doubtful interpretation at best, while ignoring the clear teaching of Scripture that tongues were languages that were supernaturally spoken as a sign to the nation of Israel. That's what they were. It's not really any more complex than that. I'm going to explain a lot more to you. But it's not really any more complex than that. All right? But they want to make it more than that because they want you to be speaking in tongues and doing all this. Why? Because most of them have a perverse spirit. That's yep, why. Right. Yeah. Yep. They're what I would call a bunch of Bible perverts. Yep. 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 They'll watch you go to hell flapping your tongue. Yep. Right. And they don't care if your soul saved. That's right. They'll watch you flapping your tongue and acting like an idiot. An epileptic fool up there that's losing their mind. Yeah. Yep. I mean through satanic operation, yeah. not through a sickness of epilepsy or something. Yeah. The point is you'll mimic that. Right. Yep. That's right. Demonic seizure, that's right. That's what I meant to say. Thank you. But this is what they do with the sign gifts that were temporary. They try to attach a permanency to them and end up forcing them on everyone. But that's not what is taught in the scriptures. And we need right. to recognize the sign gifts for what they were. Sign gifts. Yep. Amen. They were temporary gifts. They were signs yep. Yep. for a purpose. God always did them. One could go back all the way from the beginning. When God was getting ready to do a mighty work, what did he do? Signs and wonders. That's what he did. Why? To let them know. Give me an example. Moses. Yep. It wasn't God's common practice to come in, the fi in a fiery bush and watch the bush burn and, do and, and operate like that, right? No, that wasn't God. It wasn't God's normal work to make a, fall a wall of fire or, or to divide and depart the seas or anything else like that. That wasn't a normal operation that happened every day. What was it? A sign that got to Israel. Why? Because Israel seeketh the sign. That's why. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. That's why. What did Jesus say about this generation? An adulterous generation that seeketh the sign. Right. You're a bunch of spiritual adulterers if you're looking for signs right. all the time. Evil. That's what you are. Yeah. A bunch of spiritual adulterers yep. looking for signs all the time. You can't accept yeah. the plain teaching of the Word of God. Yeah, this book isn't enough for you. That's what's really being said. Yeah, right. It's not enough for you to live by faith every day in, in the Son of God yeah. and to follow this book and to serve yeah. the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's not enough. You've got to have a sign and wonder. You've got to have something fancy. Right. That's what it is. Amen. All right. Well, that wasn't even the opening, but we'll get started now. Number one, biblical tongue, tongues, little tongues, biblical tongues. That's good stuff. Yeah. No, it's not good stuff. Stop it. Don't eat those. Those are nasty. Anyway, yeah, biblical tongues were real languages, not gibberish. That's right. They were Amen. real, That's earthly right. languages Amen. that were spoken. Amen. That's right. The first time we see the gift of tongues in the Bible, we see they are earthly languages, and we find it in Acts chapter 2. The Bible says this, Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak 
in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man? This is Acts chapter 2, verse 6 through, 5, 6 through 11, excuse me. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judah and Cappadocia in Pontus in Asia in Phrygia in Pamphylia in Egypt in the parts of Libya about Serene and strangers of Rome Jews and proselytes Cretes and Arabians we do hear them speak in our tongues Amen. the wonderful works of God Amen. 15 languages at least present there at that time right. yep. Yeah. 15 different tongues represented, different languages represented at that time. Okay, well, what's going on there? They're hearing the wonderful works of God in their own tongue. Right. Amen. And no barking like a dog. Right. Right. right? No holy laughter. Right. Right? It's important to note that this is the first rule of mention. Okay, of this. Now that does I, I'm not saying that has to be a hard principle that we always use, okay? But what I'm saying is it's important to note that with tongue speaking, this is the first time that it's mentioned. Yeah. By the way, Jesus didn't speak in tongues. Right. Right. Amen. Uh -oh. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. That's right. You say tongues actually had a purpose. Tongues had a purpose, that's right. Yes, they did. <laughs> The miracle being a bunch of ignorant fishermen that are able to praise God and, the, and that they're understood in the ears of all who heard it. And there were 15, some say 17 or 14, you know, there's different various languages represented, and they heard the gospel. Wow. There is nothing in the scriptures that tells us the gift in 1 Corinthians is a different tongues than the one mentioned in Acts chapter right, 2. Right, right. Nothing in all of scripture that tells us, we'll see that... Paul was talking about something different in 1 Corinthians. That's what sometimes they'll say. No, that was for languages, but Paul was talking about a different miraculous gift that was different from that. No, that's, no. Where do you get the authority to say that? That right. that, that, that was changed. Where is that? Where yeah. Where is that said that it was changed in all of the scriptures? It's not. It's just a bunch of sensational nonsense is what yep. it is. Yep. Yep. Amen. These people don't have the power of God. Amen. I don't fear any right. of those people. I would stand in front of all of those people any day and rebuke them in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ because they don't have any power. They have no power of God. Nope. Right. None at all whatsoever. That's not of God. Really it's not Holy Ghost led. That's yeah, right. right. Nope. Hey. Number two, tongues were assigned to unbelieve to the unbelieving Israel of a work that God was doing. God was showing them with a sign and wonder that he's starting his church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he's building his church. That's what even that's what tongues were for. Right. To show Israel, unbelieving Israel who needed a sign. Right. Right? What's the Bible say in 1 Corinthians chapter 14? Turn there please. Verse number 20 to 22. Tongues were a sign to Israel because they were unbelieving and they needed a sign. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. Yeah. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Tongues were assigned to them that believed not. Right. That's what they were. They were assigned. God was using tongues to provoke Israel to jealousy. jealousy. Right. 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 That they would repent. That they would that they would trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. whom they crucified and hung on a tree. Right. right. Amen. And they gave over to Pontius Pilate and said, We will not have this man rule over us. They wanted Caesar. Yeah. And Caesar they got. Amen. Right. Rome. That's right, Rome. Jerusalem Which that's why the Bible calls this the time of the Gentiles. Yep. Jerusalem burned for it. That's a little hard for some people to understand. So Amen, we'll keep going. But <laughs> they're looking they're looking for the hidden Jew everywhere. The hidden Jew. And they need to be looking for the Pope in the Vatican. Yep. Right. And the black Pope and his white power structure and everything else. Yep, Alex Jones. Yep. Right. Who's putting who may put in Donald Trump as president? Uh oh. 
right. who's a Jesu who's Jesuit trained. Yeah. yeah. Right. Come on. That's why it's the time of the Gentiles. See the better devil. The Corinthians were abusing the spiritual gifts and were particularly enamored with tongues. As spiritual infants, they were showing off to one another. Paul tells them to stop being children and to be men by understanding the true purpose of tongues. It was a fulfillment. Turn to Isaiah chapter 28, verse number 11 through 12, and you're going to see the, this was a fulfillment of prophecy. These tongues as gifts that were given was a fulfillment of an Old Testament prophecy that Isaiah gave. Isaiah chapter 28, verse number 11 to 12. For with, listen, listen closely. This is, this is so simple to understand. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Amen. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. Wow. Right? They wouldn't. Israel as a nation would not hear. They rejected it. And God had the gospel to the individual Jew who was saved and born again, but the nation rejected it. Yep. They would not receive it. The miraculous tongues was a sign to the unbelieving Jews that God was speaking to all nations of men and calling them into one spiritual body composed of both Jews and Gentiles. This people refers to that Jewish nation whom the prophet Isaiah was speaking. Each time we see the gift of tongues exercised in the book of Acts, Jews were present. Yep. Think about that. Amen. Right? Turn to Acts chapter 2. We're going to go through there. We're going to look at these. I think they're important to look at. Every time tongues was mentioned or was used, the Jews were present. I think that's an important right. fact that is left yep. out. Because yep. Yep. I like to ask these tongue-speaking people sometimes, these Pentecostals and charismatic people, were there Jews there? Were there Hebrews there from Israel? Were you preaching to the nation of Israel? Is that why you were speaking in tongues? Were you giving a sign to Israel? Because that's, right. that's what the gift was for. Yep. That's what the sign gift was for. <clears throat> Acts chapter 2, yeah, it is. Verse 6. Now then, was this was noised abroad, and the multitude came together and were confounded. Now remember, these were all proselytes. These were all Jews. I'm not going to read all those. You understand that. These were all Jews that had come to the temple, right? They had come there for a purpose, to, uh, to observe the temple worship. That's what they were there for. Amen. And would they hear the wonderful works of God in their own tongue, yep. right? After their own language. That's what they heard. So we see that. Acts chapter 10, verse number 46 to see it again. Acts chapter 10, verse number 46. So Peter is speaking to the, to the children of Israel. Actually, he's speaking to Cornelius there, right? While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. And they are the circumcision which believed were astonished. Who was there? Who's the circumcision? Jews. Jews, that's right. Yeah. Which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. What happened here? Well, Peter brought these Jews with him of the circumcision, and they were saved. They were born again. But in order for them to understand as a sign that Gentiles could be saved, God gave the Gentiles the gift of tongues, so they all spake in tongues. Yep. Yeah. Amen. And then those Jew, then those Jews were like, "This is the work of God. This is the same thing that happened to us. We were we were uh, baptized with the Holy Ghost and we spoke with tongues. Right. right, right. So it happened to the Jew and it happened to the Gentile. Right. Do you see? It's a sign gift. Once you have, once the perfect has come, once you have the scriptures, I don't need that sign gift anymore. Mm -hmm. Once I have the completed revelation, I don't need a sign anymore. Right. I have everything yeah. I need in the Word of God completed. Right. Right. Amen. More sure right. word. All right, we'll get to that too. Amen. And then Acts chapter 19, verse number 6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. These were those certain disciples that followed John's baptism. They were Jews, right? But it doesn't say they were baptized by John. It says they followed John's bat. They, they watched John's baptism. That's another story. They were baptized unto the baptism. But it doesn't say that. Anyway, so that's another story for another day. We've already covered that. But you see that they were Jews. 
they were Jews. So pay attention to this. This is very important because, you know, there's a lot of people out there today that they like to bash Baptists, these Pentecostals, and these Charismatics. They enjoy that. Oh, yeah, well, you guys just need to be baptized of, with the Holy Ghost or of the Holy Ghost, or you just need the baptism of the Spirit. <laughs> right? You just, have you spoken tongues? Because that's the evidence. Um, no, it isn't. I'm going to prove that, too. Amen. That's right. Okay? Amen. That's right. They, want, they want to lie about that, too. Yep. Why? Because they want you to have some kind of demonic manifestation. That's what they want. Yeah. Because they're so charged full of devils, they think you got, they want to give them to you too. Yeah. Why do you think all these charismatics are always like this? <laughs> they're always like to touch you, man. They're always like touching you all the time. They can't keep their hands off you. Any of You go around, I'm telling you, on the street or anywhere, and they're always like touching you all the time. It's like, stop touching me. I'm trying to compare this stature to this stature. Yeah, yeah stop. <laughs> <laughs> he was swifting. That's what he was doing. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, the anointing on Ted Cruz didn't work. No, it didn't. <laughs> he's not, he's not <laughs> the prophesied. It's anointing. To be fair, that was spread around to um, Trump, too. Oh. Yeah, Trump got the anointing from... Uh, Kenneth Copeland. From from what's that lady's on. name? Beth Moore. Joyce Moore. Beth Moore. No, the other one. No. <laughs> the blonde harlot. What's her name? Paula White. Paula, Paula White. That's her name. Yeah, yeah. So Kenneth Coco laid his hands on him and prayed for Yeah, yeah, they are. They like to put their hands on you all the time. They do. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> anyway, so um, Acts, it's important that as we look at all these references, what are they? They're Jews that are present, yep. and they're seeing the sign gift for the benefit of the Jew. Amen. These guys, as much as they concentrate on tongues, they would have you believe that that's all that's in the Bible. Right. <laughs> that that's like the only thing that you, know, you got to be baptized with the Spirit. You got—I mean, how many times does that talk with, about in the Bible? Have you spoken in tongues? Have you spoken in tongues? Yeah, have you, you spoken in tongues? Have you spoken in tongues? <laughs> no, I haven't. Thank you. Have you read I don't want to either. Just the one tongue. Just the one tongue. English. Uh, I barely speak in that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep moving. On the day of Pentecost and in Acts chapter 19, it was the Jews themselves that spoke in tongues. Now, this is from a former Pentecostal. You got to listen to this guy's testimony. Um, his name is uh, Fernand Legrand, and it's amazing testimony what he says here. It's his observation. He got saved out of that movement. He got you know, brought out of that movement. He said, it's worth noting that wherever the signs appear, it is always in the presence of Jews. And where we do not find Jews, as in Athens or as in, or in Malta, neither do we find the sign. It is in the very nature of the sign that we find the nature of their unbelief. The sign denounced or corrected their lack of faith concerning the salvation of those who spoke languages that were foreign to their own. That is the Gentiles. But this was precisely what the Jews did not Jews did not want to believe. In fact, they were contrary to all men. Remember, the Bible says forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. Yep. The idea is of now being made one with foreigners was more than the first century Jews could stand. They couldn't take it. Yep. The thought alone was enough to fire up their Hebrew activism. Yet that was the first thing they had to understand and finally admit. So God gave them the best sign possible to make them understand what they could not or would not believe. He miraculously made Jews speak in the languages of foreigners. In so doing, God put Jewish praise into these pagan tongues. That's why he did it. A simple but attentive reading of the Bible reveals a scenario of fierce Jewish opposition towards everything that was not specifically Jewish. Well, look at it all the way through. What happened? We saw it right as soon as well. They don't keep the Sabbath, or they don't they don't uh, they, they don't keep the dietary laws, yeah. or they're eating this food, or they're doing this, or they're doing that. They don't wash their hands. Yeah, they don't wash their hands, or they're not circumcised, so they can't yeah. be saved. They were fiercely Jewish, so God showed them. Listen, do you think that I gave you this gift of tongues to speak to other people to make them Jews? No. Right? They right. were fiercely against that. They were fiercely against anybody yep. coming in like that. <laughs> We see Jonah who hates the men of Nineveh, right? Remember that? Jonah. He didn't want to go to those uncircumcised people, did he? Right. Yeah. He didn't want them to be saved. A Gentile dog being saved? Yeah. No way. Yeah, he wanted the city to burn. He sure did. 
Probably for the persecution of his parents and grandparents mm -hmm. and family that he knew they persecuted. But the spirit of opposition and unbelief will yet only be reinforced over the centuries. The Jews belong to Jehovah and to them in a closed circle of bigotry. Everyone else is cursed. That's what they think in their mind. Daring to suggest that people with a tongue different from their own could benefit from the goodness of God was to risk one's life. They led Jesus to the top of a hill to throw him off because he had just said many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias when the heaven was shut up three years and six months when great famine was throughout all the land, but unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Serapita, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. A Gentile. That's right, a Gentile. Yeah. He said they wanted to kill Jesus. Why? Because he said a Gentile was going to be saved and you're not going to be saved. That's right. Yeah, well. yeah, that's right. See? So that's what the gift was for. Amen. Jesus added this to their immense, to immense rage. That's and he right. said this, and many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, save, saving name in the Syrian. Yeah. Another Gentile. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. This was in their eyes more than enough to deserve death, and they were ready to kill him. Yeah. Right. Throw him off the top of the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> so what a narrative we find in Acts chapter 22. The prisoner Paul stands on the steps of the fortress. He motions to the crowd with one hand and asks to speak. As he begins in Hebrew, silence falls upon the crowd. Right. But at the very instant that he starts, and he says unto, said unto them, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Right? Whew, right there. Boom. Gone. Midair. They listened as far as that word Gentiles or nations and threw the dust into the air, shouting, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. Yeah. Man. What made them explode like that? Simply the idea that God could also be the God of every man and every tongue. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's right. Now, when you put it in that perspective, it's easier to understand what the gift of tongues was for. Yeah. Amen. Undeniable proof that God was going to save Gentiles from yeah. their sins. Yeah. Amen. And bring them into one body, that local New Testament church that they could serve God in. Amen. Amen. And be a part of that body. Amen. It is impossible to have a correct doctrine of tongues without understanding that it was a sign to the nation of Israel of the new thing that God was doing, which was extending the gospel to all men and bringing both Jews and Gentiles into one body. Amen. Amen. Now listen to this. The need for such a sign ceased entirely in the first century. What do you need it anymore? By 70 AD, Jerusalem had been destroyed by the Roman armies led by Titus, and the Jews had been scattered to the nations. By then, Gentiles had come to J Jesus Christ by the tens of thousands, and Gentile churches had been established throughout the Roman Empire. Yeah, right. The purpose for the gift of tongues as a sign to the nation of Israel had ended. Israel had rejected the sign, and she had been judged, just as the prophet foretold. What did he say? For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. So they, you see, that's what happened. In 1 Corinthians that's what 13. That's when you're slain in the spirit, they fall backwards. That's right, they fall backwards, don't they, when they're slain in the spirit, those charismatic churches. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. That's a that's a judgment of God to fall that's back. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that has yeah. to be the garden. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, that's right. In the garden. That's right. That happened too. They fell backward. The enemies. When Jesus said, "I am," that's right. And they went. Yeah. <laughs> they flew flew back. Right. You think you'd say, guess yourself? Well, they don't read the Bible. That's why they don't. Charismatics don't read the Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul taught the church at Corinth that the gift of tongues would cease. Now turn to 1 Corinthians, please. Verse number, or chapter number 13, verse number 8 through 10. He taught that it would cease. It was not going to be forever. Not all the spiritual gifts that were given at one time. First of all, there were many gifts that, of, of miracles that Elijah had. Well, what made it special that Elijah was the only one that could do them? That's what made it special? <laughs> And it was a short time because, hey, think about this, guys. How many times do we see in the Bible where other prophets, they didn't have any, any power like that. No. They didn't have power to do the things that Elijah did. No. I believe the two witnesses that are coming back are going to be Elijah and Moses. Amen. I believe both of them exhibit those same, those same um, gifts and miracles that the two end times witnesses. Now, we can have a difference to that. I don't really care. It's not that big of a deal. We're going to find out one day either way. Right. But right. the point is, is that they both did those miracles. Now, 
Who else did that? Not very many other men did those miracles. It was miraculous and it caused a sign. Just like, hey, remember that when the when when the king went into the temple and he and he tried to and he, and he put his hand in and, he, and the, the one prophet saw him, he put his hand in and took it out and it was it was all leprous. Yeah. And he said, ah, and he cried, his hand shrunk up or whatever. No, it shrunk up and he put it back in and he and he, and he gave it restored to him again. Why did he do that? So that king knew he was messing with God. That's why. That's right. And that's what God was doing to these Jews. He was showing them with the gift of tongues that you are messing with God. God's work. This is God's work now. Right, and right. this is what God wants to do. Right. Amen. Not for flapping your tongue in the middle of a service and running your mouth like a moron, right. running up and down the, the aisles. That's right. 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 Acting foolish and barking like a dog. Right. But he'll still show his enemies. Feeding the flesh. That's right. That's right. He might take a church and put it on Main Street. That's true. That's a sign too. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 8 through 10. The Bible says this, charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Well, we understand that. Well, I'm going to explain that to you. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Uh -oh. oh, they will? Yeah. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Amen. Now, this passage is talking about the, rel the revelatory gifts of prophecy, tongues, and knowledge. Look at that. They're all linked together right there. Prophecy, tongues, and knowledge. So you see all these people say, I got a word of knowledge. I got a word of knowledge. Well, how come your word of knowledge don't bad up is not in here? That's right. right. Every time I hear your word of knowledge, it ain't in here. That's right. <laughs> I get a little concerned about your word of knowledge when I, when I look in here and it ain't in there. That's right. Yep. And it's right. totally how come your word of knowledge is always contrary to the Bible? That's right. right. Yeah. It's hey, always man. some spooky it. thing that you got made up in your mind yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Amen. But it's never in the Bible. It's right. always contrary. It's another spirit. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they hate the word of God. It's crazy. But see, they're, why? Well, they're trying to take gifts and things that aren't theirs, and they're trying to take them, and the devil will give it to you. Hey, if you want a counterfeit of that gift, he'll give it to you. Yep. Right. Like I said, I'm a foreteller. I'm a foreteller. That's what he told me. I'm a foreteller. I'm a foreteller. I'm a foreteller. What's, that? What's that mean? <laughs> why? You see, I got this gift. <laughs> this is how he said to me. I'm just, I'm just repeating what he said. I got this gift, and I can I can look at something. I can foretell the future with them. Oh no! By look at them. Sounds like a palm like reader. Or or like, you yeah. sound like a witch. Yep. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He's like, no, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. I, you believe in the fivefold prophecy or something like that? He said, and I said, I don't even know what that is. The fivefold ministry? Yeah. Oh, oh that's yeah, it. The fivefold yeah, ministry. Uh, guess who made that up? Who made that up? I don't know. Is that like the five? Is it, really, it, was, it was. It was really popular in Christian. Not science. you, bro, Sandy. No, the oh, Charles Finney. I heard that. I guess. It was really popular in Christian Science. Oh, was it in Christian Science? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So anyway, he asked me all this. And he talked about this word of knowledge. Everything. Well, the Bible says those things would cease. They were meant for a time. Listen, right. your word of knowledge is right in here. Right. This is completed. These people, let me help you with something, okay? Look at the word of God and understand the history here. They weren't walking around with the King James Bible. Right. Contrary to what some fundamentalists try to say, that Paul was King James only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he spoke, really he spoke English. Yeah. I'm going to keep going. Um, <laughs> con contrary to that, all right? <laughs> Joy's looking at me like, that's insane. Did somebody really say that? <laughs> anyway, I think I was scaring Joy for a minute. There. She's like, really? Uh, no. But Paul wasn't King James only because Paul didn't have a King James Bible, okay? Right. Or a bus route or a few other things, but we'll talk about that later, okay? <laughs> Wagon route. <laughs> You're not a church if you don't have a bus rule. <laughs> Brilliant statements by fundamentalists. Right. Anyway, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, yeah. They weren't walking around with a King James Bible. All right? They, weren't, they didn't have the completed Word of God. Right. So what did they have to have? A supernatural gift of tongues. A supernatural gift of a word of knowledge, Amen. of prophecies. Well, what did they need that for? Well, how do you think John wrote Revelation? Right, right. Amen. He needed visions and prophecies. Yep. Yep. Right? How did Paul do it? Through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He had to have that through supernatural revelation. Right. He needed it. He didn't have this. Right. Right. This was being formed. That's how yeah. this was formed. Amen. Right. So for you to try to place yourself back there and be like, well, 
My word of knowledge? Yeah, your word of knowledge is coming from the devil and you're trumping this. Right. 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 No pun intended. Which means you're not of God. Yeah. Yep. Right. You are being seduced by spirits and doctrines of devils. Right. right. And you're speaking lies and hypocrisy right. and having your conscience seared with a hot iron. Yeah, we'll get to that too. Yeah. But this passage is talking about those revelatory gifts of prophecy, tongues, and knowledge. It is not knowledge itself that will cease. It is the gift of knowledge. It'll say, well, knowledge will cease. You're all going to be dumb. <laughs> Sorry, knowledge well, is over. You're all dumb. That's coming true, actually. actually. Right? <laughs> it's not tongues that will cease. It's the gift of tongues that will cease. What do you mean, preacher? Well, I can learn a new language. Right. You can learn a new language. Amen. Some of you know another language. You know another language, Brother no, Finney? No, Are we stretching? My hand. Oh, you're not, stretching. He's okay. He's a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> that is, legal language is definitely different than English. So, yeah. just... Um, <laughs> But you know what? You can learn another language, right? So, no, the gift of tongues is what ceased, right? That supernatural gift. When will these gifts cease? The passage indicates that they will cease in two stages. The gift of tongues is treated separately from the gift of prophecy and knowledge. The gift of tongues is mentioned in verse 8, and then it is not mentioned again. Whereas the gift of prophecy and knowledge are mentioned again in verse 9 and 10. And I believe that this teaches that the gift of tongues would cease of its own accord prior to the secession of the other two gifts. Amen. We can see this in the book of Acts. The final time that we see tongues spoken is in Acts 19. By that point in church history, there was no question that God was calling the Gentiles by the gospel. Amen. And the matter had been made crystal clear. Once the sign has been fulfilled, it's foolish to continue with it. It's already been fulfilled. The reason why the other two gifts hung around longer... Then tongues was because John had to finish the canon of Scripture. Yep. Or that the Scripture had to be fi fulfilled, finished. The revelation had to be given. Right? Amen. So that gift had to, those gifts had to continue until then. By then, after that, there was no need for it anymore. Why? Because you have the Word of God. You don't need it anymore. Right. We'll talk about that on Sunday. Once the sign has been fulfilled, it's foolish to continue with it. If I were to tell someone who is meeting at the airport that he will know me because I, I will be wearing a red hat, the red hat is the sign. Once we meet and he recognizes me by the sign of the hat, the need for the sign has ceased. Every time he sees me, he doesn't see a red hat anymore, right? You say, I'm the guy, I'll be the guy with the red hat. Once you see the guy, okay, fine, I see him. The next time I see him, he doesn't have to wear a red hat, so I know he's that guy. Right? right? It's the same thing with these sign gifts. To know it's of God after that's been fulfilled, I don't need to I don't need that gift anymore. We don't you don't need the gift of tongues anymore. You don't need it anymore. You have the word of God. You have the written word of God. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Right, right. Amen. Thus the gift of tongues ceased even before the events recorded in the book of Acts concluded. The Gentiles were saved and the Jews were taught one body of Jews and Gentiles, and no need for tongues any longer. Because tongues were assigned to unbelievers, not to believers. Amen? Next, biblical tongues, number three, bib or four, whatever number it is. Three. Bib thank you. Biblical tongues were spoken to God. Biblical tongues, I always lose my place. Uh, biblical tongues were spoken to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Yep. He, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. What does that mean? I mean, by the way, you don't ever see in the scriptures where you train people to speak in tongues. Right. Right? Yeah. Right. There's whole books. About you're not, you're not, there's nowhere in the Bible where you teach somebody to say pookie poo. Pookie poo. Right? <laughs> Just it say it, it'll make you laugh. <laughs> A miracle. It will. It was a miracle. <laughs> 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 not a miracle. The no. with the bun up there who was like, <laughs> 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 yeah. They all sound like that. What do you mean, that lady? They all sound like that. Kind of good at it. Anyway, yeah, he was kind of good at that. I was taught how to speak in tongues. Oh, no. Edit that, please. <laughs> <laughs> Acts chapter 2.11 states that they heard them speak in their own tongues the wonderful works of God. But that was not God's chosen method of evangelism. You understand that, right? 
God chose the foolishness of preaching, not tongue speaking to save them that believe. Right. What did he say? He said he chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe, not tongue speaking. Why do you think nobody ever gets saved and they're all lost and dying in their sins and ready to go to hell in all those churches? Because yeah, right. okay. they don't know the gospel. Walk up and ask them what the gospel is sometime. Love. They don't have a clue what the gospel is. Right. They don't know what the Bible is. It's love. <laughs> it's love. <laughs> Love. <laughs> yeah, he does. Because Peter stood up and preached Jesus unto them, not tongues. Right. Peter didn't get up and speak in tongues. What did he do? He preached unto them Jesus, it says. And, th and thousands were saved. They weren't saved by speaking in tongues. Right. The tongues were assigned to them, to the unbelievers. Amen. Charismatics teach that tongues are for men, not to God. Yep. Oh, you need to just for men. This is what a formal that former Pentecostal pastor said. He said on several occasions, talking to people who were deeply anchored in their convictions, I asked the question: When tongues are interpreted in your assembly, what is the context of the message? I did not inquire because I did not know the answer, but I wanted to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. So, leaving no place for ambiguity, without exception, the replies always confirmed what I had already observed. It was a word of encouragement or prophecy or exhortation or even evangelization. Quite clearly, these were addressed to those present, that is, to men, and was therefore in complete contradiction with the Holy Spirit who said just the opposite. He said, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Yeah. It's not unto men, it's unto God. So why are you saying that you were speaking this for everybody else? One of, he said one of his friends, an enthusiastic pastor, invited me for a gospel campaign in his church. He told me about a lady who in a private talk with him had spoken in tongues in what she said he explained. I discerned a message for myself. The opportunity was ideal. I simply asked him, how do you reconcile the idea of a message addressed to you personally with the biblical statement that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God? You are not God. It was like hitting him over the head. He was totally speechless. <laughs> he had just discovered a text that he had never seen before that he had not taken the time to examine. He said, Third, this, this preacher goes on to say, 30 years later, nothing seems to have changed. The last interview, previously mentioned, finished in the same way as the rest. After having more, once more pointed out that speaking in tongues in his church, as corroborated, corroborated by personal experience and observations, was obviously addressed to men, and then it was contrary to what the Bible says. I asked him, what will you put aside, the word of God or your experiences? You must make a choice between the two. Which will it be? Without hesitation and twice in succession, his reply was, I choose experience. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, I want to ask you a question. Always. Have you ever have you ever found a charismatic to tell you that they would, that uh, believe, when you show them from the scriptures, have you ever seen a charismatic choose the word of God over their experience nope. ever. Nope. I never have. Nope. I have never seen a charismatic. I'm telling you what, it's so locked into them. It's so, it's a demon in them is what it is. Most of them, they got a devil in them yep. is what they got. And yep. you couldn't get that out with anything because they don't want it out. Right. Nope. right. And they will not budge. Their experience trumps the Bible every time. Right. It's The Pentecostal movement is a whole movement built on experiences. Yep. Not on the foundation of Scripture, but on experiences. Right. Right. That's what it's based on. Right. And that's not the gifts that are found in the Bible. Those are not the gifts. And it's important for you to be able to have explain the difference to people of Amen. what real spiritual gifts are. Right. And this phony garbage that they try to pass off as gifts that are counterfeit to the core. He said this, he said, understandable but wretched obstinacy that is explained by the terrible confession of a pastor who said to me on this particular point of doctrine. When this word of Paul began to circulate in our assemblies, it had the effect of a bomb. We could not allow it to continue because we would have had to admit that everything done up until then was false. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> oh no! They, they stopped that. their ears. They did. You mean they would have to? By the way, that's in uh, and Legrand wrote that a former Pentecostal pastor. He says all about speaking in tongues, page twelve to fourteen. He's basically he's telling you that they're ex and I can tell you by being on the street and talking to these people that that is the absolute truth. And yeah. Nate can tell you that 
These guys can tell you that. Brother Jacob can tell you that. These guys that have been out there on the streets with these guys and dealt with them in your family and right. personal life, right. their experience trumps everything. Yep. They don't care because they had a feeling. They felt it in their heart. They felt it in their soul, right? Because <laughs> that's how they know, right? In their toe. They were hooked on a feeling. Right? What was his name? Uh, Toby Mack? Yeah. He's the same way. Yeah. Hey, you can't tell you can't tell CCM guys they're wrong about their music. No. Why? Because they feel it in their heart and their soul. Well, well, they don't know the huh? No. Right. Next, number four, biblical tongues included the miracle of interpretation. Amen. This right. is the part where they yep. get kind of crazy here. They don't they don't like this. Turn to First Corinthians right. chapter twelve, verse number eight. Biblical tongues included the miracle of interpretation. Yep. Verse number eight, for to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom, to another word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Amen. Hmm? It's a gift, interpretation of tongues, but it always included that. Now, 1 Corinthians 14, verse number 27 to 28. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. See, there has to be an interpreter. But the problem with the modern day movement is there is no interpreter for the most part. And if there is a few words of gibberish, the few, there's a few words of gibberish are said and a long explanation is given. Right. Right? Yeah. A bunch of gibberish and then somebody gives like a, a whole, a, a whole uh, testimony of 15 minutes of something that took like five seconds to come out of somebody's mouth. <laughs> well, you see, this is what they were saying. <laughs> sure, sure it was. This sure was. So I like this guy. It's a total sham in a game, but I like what this Legrand, he devised a simple test, he said, for the interpretation of tongues. But he said, no Pentecostal charismatic has offered to submit to it. Listen to this. This is great. And it, and it makes sense. He said, prepare a meeting where one of you will speak in tongues and three others will make a recorded interpretation in isolation. The interpretations that ought to say, that ought to say more or less the same thing will then be compared. Here in writing, I stand by this yet unanswered proposition as a challenge to any charismatic tongue-speaking community. Why is there not yet, and will there never be an answer to this offer? Very good. Which is nevertheless an honest one. Why? Because they know those three people aren't going to say the same thing, because it's right. not the Spirit of God. Right. It's a bunch of garbage is all it is. Amen. That's what it is. It's a bunch of confusion and nonsense. That's right. It's not the power of God. Amen. Right. It's a grand waste of time. Yeah. Right. If they concentrated more on preaching the gospel to lost sinners mm. than trying to teach people how to speak in tongues or try to get them to uh, or try to teach them the gift or force that upon them, they would really see some po a power the power of God. But some of them, the most of them, have to be saved. They're lost. That's right. Yep. If Pentecostals and Charismatics have the genuine miraculous gifts of speaking in, in languages and of interpreting the same, let them step forward and prove it. Otherwise, their very refusal is sufficient refutation of their practice. Right. Listen, and I want you to understand, uh, as we go through this, we're going to go through some of these point-by-point -point, uh, bullet points here uh, of some things. Biblical tongues, the next thing I want to tell you about is biblical tongues were bound by apostolic direction. Right. <laughs> There was, a, there was a direction that was given, okay? And the apostles laid down a proper order of speaking in tongues. Have you ever seen any of these jokers follow that order at all? No. Nope. Absolutely not. It is utter chaos. Yeah. Yeah. It is utter chaos. Now listen to this, because that's the next point. Paul said, forbid not to speak in tongues, but he also gave many serious restrictions on how tongues could be used. He said, by the way, the, the command was don't forbid scriptural tongues not what modern day charismaniacs do that right. they try to they try to say is the same thing that happened in the scriptures because it wasn't that's not biblical tongues we don't have to defend the fact that we forbid their unbiblical nonsense yeah. we don't have to defend that that's not you're not doing what's found in the scriptures right so you are not even practicing tongues right. so they say you guys are wrong because you forbid people to speak in tongues 
No, we forbid your demonic nonsense. That's what we forbid. We forbid your disorder and your chaos. We forbid your satanic uh, uh, infiltration into our churches. Yeah, that's right. You come here and tell me you spoke in tongues, I'll tell you one thing. Number one, if you got baptized in the charismatic church, you ain't a member here until you get scripturally Amen. baptized Amen. in deep water here. Because we don't have any we don't have any charismatic baptism here. Amen. We don't accept that. Praise and number right. two, if you said you spoke in tongues, you have to have a public refutation of that saying that you do Amen. not believe that doctrine. Or you will not be a member of this church. That's right, man. That you totally, absolutely, 100% renounce that doctrine as antichrist and wicked to the core. Yeah. I will not have charismatics infiltrating this church right. and bringing their damnable heresies That's with right. them. Amen. And their wicked false spirits and their wicked sat uh, satanic... Uh, infiltration that they want to bring into this place. And I, I mean that. I'm dead serious about that. I've had people that, I, I, I guarantee you, they'll come and once they know our position, they'll stay far away from me. You know what? If they try to get in here, they're not going to get in here with that. If they tell me they speak in tongues and everything else, they have that, then you know what? You can't be a member here because you don't agree with our, right. you don't agree with the doctrine that we hold to. Right. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. And you don't even know what biblical tongues are. Right. 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 Amen. That's the problem. Yeah. So what are the apostles, what were the apostles' directions? We're going to look at some of those. Uh, number one, tongues are to be spoken only by course, one by one. If the Bible says, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course. Amen. Very specific directions. That's never followed. Now watch the videos. Do you see them do that? <laughs> no, what are they doing? They're running around, <laughs> dancing, women being immodest, showing their bodies off, uh, gyrating and everything else, acting like a bunch of fools. <laughs> Amen. 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 What's that? And they're all speaking the same time. Yep. Yep. There's mass confusion. Yeah. Barking like dogs. We'll get to that too. Uh, by course, it's supposed to be one at a time. By course, that's right. Yep. Yep. Amen. And let one interpret. Rarely are the tongues tongues messages interpreted in modern Pentecostalism. Right. And when they are, it is often obviously obvious that the interpretation is something different than the tongue. Next. There is to be no confusion or lack of peace. The Bible says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, Amen. as in all the churches of the saints. Right. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 14. Right, the churches of the saints. Charismatic churches aren't, of the, aren't churches right. of the saints. Right. But see, so we have to reject that. Every time I, David Klaus, every time I've been in a Pentecostal charismatic service where the Spirit was moving, I've thought to myself, this is confusing, disorder reigns. Yes. The tongues cannot be understood. Things happen that make no sense and that are not found in the Bible. But we are told that God is not the author of confusion. And that covers a lot of territory. God's, first of all, number one, you're not doing biblical tongues because there's not languages. All right. If you have a, Chi if you have a, a, a Chinese person or a Japanese person that shows up and, you're, and you can speak in that tongue, then, then someone else is to interpret that. Right. That's a language. Yeah. Right. A useful language right. for a purpose. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But secondly, if there's all this confusion, that's not... Look at those services. I've watched all those things, and they are mass confusion and hysteria. They're demonic to the core is what they are. Yep, yep, they are. Like that wicked devil out there in... What's his name? Um, Bethel Redding. Bethel? Yeah, you're talking about that church. Johnson, yeah. yeah, what's that other name? Heidi, that nut? Heidi, Heidi Baker. Baker. Oh, that demonic lady. Yeah. yeah. She is full of mess. She is devil possessed in the toenails, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, which brings me to the next point in, in tongues. Biblical tongues, women are not allowed to speak in tongues. Amen. Right. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. First yeah, Corinthians 14. 34 says this, Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. What does Paul refer to? The law of Moses, which also said the woman is under man's authority. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 16, and Numbers chapter 30. This is the same chapter that about speaking in tongues. Right. This is, yeah, and 1 Corinthians chapter 14 is about speaking in tongues. It's about the spiritual gifts. Right. Now, of course, we understand there has always been a, a rule that women are to keep silent in church. Right. That's, they're not to talk. So that includes speaking in tongues. 
That includes the speaking in tongues. Oh, there goes the whole Pentecostal movement. Right? There goes the whole Pentecostal movement. Shut it down tomorrow. Right. right. There you go. Because how can you continue it when they're supposed to be quiet? Yep. Yeah. Why? Because in case they get up and preach their little prophecy and it goes against something their husband disagrees with, right. they are in violation of the scriptures. That's yeah. why they're supposed to be quiet. Amen. Yep. Right. Amen. Yeah. That's another reason why a lady's not to be a preacher and to be bold and confrontational. Why? Because maybe her husband is standing right there. Right. She may be speaking against him. Yep. She's definitely speaking out of order. Bring right. shame to give Bring shame to him. That's right. That's right. Amen. Women have been at the forefront of the tongues speaking since the inception of Pentecostalism. Yeah. A woman was the first to speak in tongues at Parham's Topeka Bible School. Yeah. Uh oh. A woman was the first, a fir first to speak in tongues at Seymour's Azusa, Azusa Street Mission. Yep. A reporter with the Los Angeles Times who visited the mission on April 17, 1906, observed this. The old exhorter, Seymour, urged the sisters to let the tongues come forth, oh. and the women gave themselves over to a riot of religious fervor. Wow. wow. A riot. A riot. Let them come forth. They were practicing voodoo. Yeah, voodoo. Yeah, that's what happened. They opened up. Bunch of wicked devils. Release the devils. Yep. Bunch of absolute wicked people. And you got so many people that follow this garbage. Yep. Oh yeah. Today, and they call it a Christianity. They call it a church. That's not biblical tongues. Right. Women aren't even supposed to speak it. So I know you didn't get the gift of tongues. Right. Right. What's that? Never one example of women speaking in tongues in scripture. If you could remove the women from the modern tongue-speaking movement, it would collapse. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Why do you think they love it so much? Because it gives them a sense of authority. Yep. And it gives them a sense of speaking a word of knowledge or authority or this and that. So they think that they have, I got a message directly from God that went around my husband that has nothing to do with my husband, and I get to speak it. Yeah. Well, lady, God never gave you the right to do that. Right, right. Amen. Not at all. Amen. You were in violation of Scripture completely. That's right. People get mad about that. When you start talking about men, women, oh, yeah. and speaking, yeah. and all those things, in that proper order, I'm going to tell you why. If that bothers Amen. you, you got you got a little bit of that Jezebel spirit in you. You better yeah. get right with God. Yeah. Just a little bit of that. Just enough to make, to make you get a little bit upset and for it to bother you. <laughs> right. And I'm going to tell you, that's what that is. That's a little bit of that spirit that you better beg God to remove from you that influence of that Jezebel spirit. Amen. Yep. That's right. So you're just mean to women. I'm not mean to women. Not at all. Right. What I do believe is being biblical towards women. Right. 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 <clears throat> Amen. Amen. I don't believe in using them. I don't believe in abusing them. Amen. That's right. Amen. But I also don't believe in putting them into a position where, where God did not put them. <laughs> right. And leave them unprotected. From the devil. From the devil, that's right. That's right. Amen. But you get people that don't like that preaching today. Why? Because we live in this, this limp wristed society where men are not men and women are men. That's yep. where we are. Right, yeah. Where the women are bold and the men are limp wristed. Yep. And they ask their wife if they have permission to do something. And they wear skinny jeans. Right. And they wear the skinny jeans. <laughs> Big holes. Yeah. Big holes. Big loop earrings. Big loop earrings. <laughs> if you could if you could remove the women from the modern tongue speaking movement, it would collapse. But the Spirit of God plainly forbids them to speak in tongues or to prophesy in the meetings where the saints are gathered together and men are present. Obviously, women can instruct help instruct other women and they can teach children. And that's their God given place. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> that's not a belittling thing. Because I'm gonna tell you what, lady. You try to be a man, and you'll find out how you get destroyed. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Amen. You'll be vulnerable. Yeah. 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 And very fooled. Easily fooled. Yep. Just like when a man tries to tries to do the things that a woman is supposed to do, he doesn't it doesn't work well. Right. Doesn't work well at all. Why? Because God didn't equip you to do it. That's why. Right. How come I don't feel slighted because I'm not a woman, but some women feel slighted because they're not a man? Huh? Why? Why is that? I'll tell you why. 
because you have an improper understanding and the devil's got you deceived and what you think in your mind is, is that it's, it, the grass is greener on the other side right. and if I could just exhibit some of those traits of a man and if I could be in charge I'd run things better yeah I know I've heard that a lot okay and I and I, I've met a lot of Jezebels like that before that believe that but I'm sorry you're wrong because God didn't equip you to do that right what he made you for was a glorious place that only you can fulfill but he's got your mind messed up to where you reject that glorious position that God put you in just like Eve did yep Eve had the best place in the garden yeah amen think about it in all of creation Eve had the best place she was protected by her husband she was guarded by him. He was the one that was he was the one that would bear the reproach and that would bear the, that would need to lead, that would need to do everything. She would be protected. She was made for him. That was the best place that God put her. But she rejected it. And so many ladies today do the same thing. They want to be out in the front, they want to be on the front row, they want to do all those things. Yeah. And that's because that's Satan's trap. Yeah. Anyway, I, that was free. It didn't cost you anything. Those who are truly, by the way, the next point is those who are truly spiritual will acknowledge Paul's authority. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14, Amen. 37. Amen. Many times when, when, I, when we've shown these restrictions to Pentecostals and Charismatics, they have argued against them and given various reasons why they don't feel obligated to obey them. This only proves that they are not truly spiritual and are not truly attuned to and obedient to the voice of Almighty God. They are self-deceived, and the evidence is that they will not acknowledge that the things Paul wrote are the commandments of God. Can't acknowledge it. By the way, the next thing is everything is to be done decent. Let all things be done decently, right? The Bible says. It means that means honestly as well, by the way. It carries the idea of moral decency and sincerity and integrity of adorning the gospel of Jesus Christ and the church of Jesus Christ in such a manner that no reproach is brought upon it by our actions. When we think about the deception and fraud that is so prevalent in the Pentecostal charismatic movement, and when we think about the many times the women are allegedly overcome by the Spirit and fall in an indecent manner and have to be covered, it's obvious that all things are not done decently. Right. If you've ever watched one video, you see these girls flopping around immodestly. So much so that they have to cover them with things yeah, wow. that their bodies don't show. Yeah. Wow. That's the Spirit of God? That's what you're telling me the Spirit of God is? God of this world. That's right. And next, we're told everything is to be done orderly. The God of creation is the God of order. He's not the God of confusion and right. disorder. Amen. Those are the apostolic directions for the, on tongue speaking that were given. Next, God gave the gift and nowhere are we told to seek it out. God gave those gifts severally as he will. Turn to 1 Corinthians 12, 11. Oh, everybody ought to speak in tongues. No, they shouldn't. First of all, biblical tongues, not everybody had the gift of biblical right, tongues. Right. We're going to prove that. i got to keep moving. It's 845. I'm going to keep going here. 1 Corinthians 12, 11, But all these worketh this one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Who divides it severally as he will? The Holy Ghost. Right? right. Who gives it? The Holy Ghost does severally as he wills it is god who gives the gifts through his spirit and you don't seek out that gift and let it go like the charismatics teach just let it go and let let the spirit move you just empty your mind and just let the spirit whatever comes to your mind just say it like poopy poo yeah, yeah. right yeah. yeah let it go yeah they say stop analyzing things through the Bible and your systems and just let it go. <laughs> These wicked devils will have you being oppressed for sure by devils. Yep. Opening yourself up to unclean spirits. Yep. Right. Yep. Right. The disciples did not seek to speak in tongues on the day of Pentecost. Nor did they take a class on letting go and letting God. Just like charismatics <laughs> teach. There is no evidence, in fact, that they even expected to speak in tongues. 
That's right. Yeah. In every instance in which Christians spoke in tongues in the book of Acts, the tongues were sovereignly given. Hey. In no instance were the recipients trying to speak in tongues. Right. They weren't doing that stuff trying to get themselves to say something. Get it going. Get it they, going. Yeah. Prime it up. Yeah. <laughs> Prime the pump. Yep. Bring out the baby. Bring it out. Bring it out. Yeah, have you ever heard that? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Bring it out. Oh, yeah. It's the inner baby. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> we'll talk later, bro. <laughs> but that's what they try. That's what they try to get. Nobody tried to speak in tongues. Oh, I'm trying. It's like it's almost like here's what they're here's what you have to liken this to. It's almost like they're trying to teach you to work a spell. Yeah, and that you have to get it just right and keep in the zone and get it right and you'll be able to do this spell. Just keep saying this over and over again. Eventually it's going to click and it's going to happen. That's right. They're trying to teach you witchcraft. Yep, that's yeah. right. that's what they're doing. Yeah, put your hand over your belly. And let the waters flow out. Yeah, let the waters flow out like rivers of living waters or whatever yeah. they try to... All that. What is that? I don't know. Check out the Kundalini spirit. Check out all those things. It's right. all... I proved that before in that charismatic sermon I did that it's all the same manifestations and signs that's that right. they do are right. the exact same thing right. these charismatics are not my brethren nope. they are right. of another spirit right. they preach another gospel and right. let it be a curse right. Right. Amen. 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 all right next all Christians in the first century did not speak in tongues that didn't happen Okay, all the Christians of the first century didn't speak in tongues. What they try to do, what they try to say is that all Christians spoke in tongues. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7 through 10. The Bible says this, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit. So he's going through there and he's giving, he's saying to another is given this, to another is given that. And God hath, and now, now move forward to verse number 28 through 30. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret? What did Paul ask here? Do all speak in tongue with tongues? The question is rhetorical, and the answer is no. Except the United Pentecostal Church tries to get around this by making a distinction between tongues as the initial evidence of spirit baptism and tongues as a gift of the spirit. Right. Makes no sense. Well, they also believe they're Here's what they say. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Some people quote 1 Corinthians 12, 30 in an attempt to prove that not all speak in tongues when they are filled with the Spirit. Do all speak with tongues? However, this verse refers to the gift of tongues. That is speaking a public message in tongues to be interpreted for the congregation, which is a spiritual gift. This is what they say in this Pentecostal say, that a person may exercise subsequent to infilling of the Spirit. Though both tongues are the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, no, they're not. And tongues as the latter spiritual gift are the same in essence. They are different in administration and operation. Uh, See how they wiggle around it? Yeah? No, they don't. No, there's nothing. They make it up. This teaching does not hold up in the light of Scripture. A simple survey of the book of Acts proves conclusively that not all believers in the early churches spoke in tongues. Even on the day of Pentecost, while the disciples that were in the upper room spoke in tongues, those that were saved that day through Peter's preaching did not speak in tongues. Right. They, not everybody spoke in tongues. We can see that clearly. In Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 6 and verse number 7, they didn't speak in tongues. I'm going to give you a list of these. How about the Ethiopian eunuch that was saved in Acts chapter right. 8 verse number 35? Right. Did not He didn't speak in tongues. Right. The first people who were saved in Antioch in Acts chapter 11 verse number 20 through 21, they didn't speak in tongues. Lydia and her household who were saved in Acts chapter 16 and the Philippian jailer and his family who were saved in Acts chapter 16 did not speak in tongues. Those who were saved in Thessalonica, in Berea, in Athens, in Acts 17, did not speak in tongues. Crispus and others who were saved at Corinth, in Acts chapter 18, verse number 8, did not speak in tongues. Those who believed in Ephesus, in Acts chapter 19, did not speak in tongues. Right. The Jews, in Acts chapter 2, verse number 41, when they heard Paul's pre or Peter's preaching, they didn't speak in tongues. I, I did some of these. I'm going to skip some of these. Uh, let's see. Yep, I got most of these. Okay, good deal. And those who believed in Thessalonica, Christian, all of those first century Christians, they didn't speak in tongues. Right. None of them did. Why? 
Because what did God send Paul to do? To speak in tongues? No. Did he send him to baptize? No. What did he send him to do? To preach the gospel. That's what he sent him to do. Jesus didn't say, go ye into all the world and speak in tongues. <laughs> but now if you follow the charismatic Bible, the charismatic Bible, the one they write in their own mind, says this, go ye into all the world and teach people to preach it, uh, to, to speak in tongues. That's right. That's their gospel. Yep. Their gospel is speak in tongues. That's right. Cursed. It's a bunch of nonsense. It is. Amen. Satanic, a diversion from the gospel. So you leave the simplicity that is found in Christ Jesus and always searching for some manifestation of something. Right. Yep. Yep. Because this isn't enough for them. Because right. yep. they're not saved. That's right. That's why. Yep. If they were saved, this word would fulfill Amen. them. Amen. And if they are saved, they'll repent and they'll walk away when they yep. see the truth. Amen. If not, they'll go off their feelings. Yep. Yep. Right? All right, next, they try to use the excuse of, well, it's a private prayer language. <clears throat> a private prayer language is not biblical spiritual, the biblical, biblical spiritual gift of tongues. It's not. Right. No. That's not. First, Paul said the tongue speaker edifies himself in 1 Corinthians 14, 4. That would not be possible unless the words could be understood. Right. Because throughout the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians, Paul says that understanding is necessary for edification. In verse 3, he says that prophesying edifies because it comforts and exhorts men. In verse 4, he says that tongue speaking does not edify unless it is interpreted. In verse 16 and 17, he says that if someone does not understand something, he is not edified. So let me get this straight. So you're 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 blabbering off your mouth with your tongue, and nothing you're saying makes sense to you. You don't know what you're saying, but that's supposed to be a good thing, right? Right? Speaking unintelligibly like that, babbling like that, is supposed to be a good thing. Sounds like those that peep and mutter, right? Uh oh. Which are signs of devil possession. Yep. yep. Wizards. Wizards. That's right. Second, if the tongue speaking of 1 Corinthians 14 is different from that of Acts 2, the Bible never explains the difference. We already talked about that. There is no difference. It's the same. Third, Paul says that tongues are earthly languages. If the tongue speaking in 1 Corinthians 14 were some sort of private prayer language, why would Paul give this prophetic explanation of it and state dogmatically that it is an earthly language? He does not say that only some types of tongues are languages. Others right. are just absolute babbling. He doesn't teach that. Right. No, he taught they were specific languages. Right. Fourth in 1 Corinthians 14, 28, Paul says, The tongue speaker speaks both to himself and to God. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church yep. and let him speak to himself and to God. This means that he can understand what he is speaking. Otherwise, how could he speak to himself? Do you babble with words you can't understand to yourself? Say, well, no, this guy will interpret it for me because I don't know what I just said. Really? Then why would you say it? The Bible says we will speak with the understanding. Yeah. Right. Amen? That's right. Fifth, there is no example in 1 Corinthians 14 of a believer speaking in tongues privately. Where do you find that anywhere? Where did they speak privately in tongues? Could you show me one instance in this Bible right here where somebody was praying privately in an unknown tongue, nope. speaking tongues by himself? Show me anywhere in there. Is it anywhere in there? So you made up something that you can't even find in the scriptures in order to suit your feelings? That's what you did? Yeah, that's what they do. They just made it up. They just made it up. Because it's not there. Well, they couldn't have a devil. <laughs> no, they couldn't have a devil, that's right. <laughs> so it must be biblical. And by the way, have you ever seen the encourage? Did the Apostle Paul give encouragement to go speak privately in tongues? <laughs> wow. Never. Never, that's right. Wow. First Corinthians 14. 27, 28. What's that? It's only in the context of a church. It's only in the context of a church. That's right. right. Because it's a gift to the church. That's right. For the edification. Yep. To be used for that purpose. And it was a short-term gift. But they were using that gift and they didn't really need it. They were all just speaking in tongues. They were they were abusing the gift. Yep. You can abuse a spiritual gift. Right. Ooh, that's another sermon. Yep. All together. Amen. We'll save that for some other time. Yep. 
But he's talking about the exercise of that in public meetings. Paul says that if there is no interpretation, the individual tongue speaker should keep silent and pray to God. But he says nothing about getting off by himself and privately praying. Yep. Right. Six, if there is a private prayer language that edified the Christian's life, it would be very important the Bible would explain it clearly. Wouldn't it? It's usage as it does the, the use of tongues in the church. I say this because, listen, if you go to the Word of God and you look, did we not get specific instructions from Christ about how to pray? Yep. What did his apostles ask? Lord, teach us to pray. Yep. Not, Lord, teach us to speak in tongues. Yep. Lord, teach us to do miracles. Lord, teach us to do divine healing. Lord, teach us to pray in tongues. Do you find anywhere in the instructions of Jesus Christ, our model, to model after in prayer? Right. And everything, by the way. Amen. Right. Do you see anywhere in the scriptures where Jesus Christ taught to pray in tongues? And if this is some spiritually edifying thing that would move your spirit and draw you closer to God, how come the Son of God incarnate, the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God, didn't tell us to do it then? Right. Amen. Yeah. And didn't instruct Paul to tell us to do it either. That's right. That's when you pray, speak in tongues. No, he actually said not to vain babble That's with right. vain repetitions yeah, right. like right. the heathens do. Yeah. <gasps> Uh-oh. That would mean that your private prayer language that you're babbling with, that's vain repetition. Jesus actually preached against what you're doing. Yep. Right. Hey. Not for it. That's right. What you're doing is contrary to the scriptures. Right. Amen. Folks, this is important because people have perverted yep. the yep. spiritual yep. gifts. So there's a whole movement of millions of people out there yep. right. that just go to church and they, they, they're not edified by the word of God. They're not lifted up in their most holy faith. They're lifted up with pride and they're, 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 some of them are possessed and they're rolling around on floors. Yep. And, they're, and they're drunk in the spirit and holy laughter and speaking in tongues and all kinds of disorderly things. Why? Because somebody doesn't rightly divide the word of truth. Right. Somebody doesn't show them the scriptures. Right. Show them the truth. And they don't listen. It's, it's not, it is not possible that tongue speaking could be a necessary part of the Christian life because Paul plainly states that not all speak in tongues. So if it was a part of our Christian life, wouldn't we all be able to do it? When Paul said not all speak in tongues. So wouldn't we be able to do it? We should be able to. But we don't because Paul said we wouldn't. Yep. Right. By the way, here's what they say. Listen to this. Some will say this. Why then does Paul say, I would that ye all spake with tongues? The answer is that Paul was not saying that all did speak with tongues or that all could speak with tongues. He was merely expressing a desire that the exercise of spiritual gifts be done and that it be done right. Right. Now listen to this. In 1 Corinthians 7, 7, Paul uses exactly the same expression in the context of celibacy. He said, for I would that all men were even as I myself. But we don't know any Pentecostals or Charismatics who take this statement literally by teaching that it is God's will for every believer to remain unmarried. But they take the same expression in 1 Corinthians 14, 5 as a law. Right, right. There's a strange inconsistency there. I wonder why. Wow. Yeah, I wonder why. Eighth, all the New Testament instructions about prayer take for granted that prayer is a conscious, understandable act on the part of the believer and that he is speaking to God in understandable terms. Right. And then we understand Jesus' instructions uh, on prayer. I'm not going to go through that with you just because you can go through that and you can see that. You know, um, why pray tell if tongues are so important? Didn't Jesus teach his disciples to use a heavenly prayer language? The answer is simple and sweet. He never used one. Right. He spoke while in communion with his glorious heavenly father in his plain, ordinary language in public and private. Yeah. Jesus never used tongues. Some might argue saying he never spoke in tongues because the Holy Spirit's fullness and indwelling had not come yet. But the Spirit was given to him without measure. Right. All during his earthly ministry. He's God. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Jesus Christ was the perfect example. Yeah, John the Baptist had the, had, was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb, and he didn't speak in tongues. Why? Because it was a sign given to specific people for a specific purpose. Right. And when, the, when it was over, it's finished. There's no need for it anymore. Right? The same thing is in Paul's instructions about prayer. Paul never mentions in anything on prayer. Paul says pray without ceasing. He gives directions through prayer. Never tells us to do that. Never tells us to pray some private prayer language. Why? 
Because these people are taking an overemphasis on one thing and making it throughout the whole Bible the basis of everything of their faith. Do you literally, these people are going to hell because they believe they've received the Holy Ghost and the sign of that is them speaking in tongues. They are right. on their way to hell. Right. They are lost sinners, dead in trespasses and sins, right. and deceived by devils. Do you not think that the devil would not give you the gift, I put that in parentheses, of speaking in tongues? Do you think he wouldn't give you that to let that blabber come out of your mouth, that blabber, that nonsense come out of your mouth and, and, and flapping your tongue like that or giving you a gift of healing even or anything like that, giving you any of those things to keep you dead and in your yep. trespasses and sins and on your way to hell? Because yep. yep. you're trusting in an outward manifestation of something instead of faith by Jesus Christ alone. Right. Yep. Just it's dangerous, folks. This is dangerous stuff. And that's why it's important to belabor this and go through this with you. And I know it's long. Long, but you need to go back and listen to this and you need to have this grilled in your head so these charismatics don't come by and fool you and make you look stupid when you're on the street because you have no answer for them i am so tired of baptists never having an answer for anybody right amen watching these people take advantage of people on the streets and everywhere else because you don't have an answer for them you can't tell them anything right why because you're too lazy to study it yeah right. Come on. Right. right. Amen. Right. So, you know what? And sometimes you don't have the time to study it. I understand that. So guess what? I took the time to do it. Now listen to it. Listen to it again. Get it down. Yeah. Grill these bullet points into your head. Drill them in there. Yeah. Drill them in your head so you know them. So you have them concrete and you understand how to explain yourself to these. Hey, listen, it's going to come up in your life. It came up in Nate's life. He had to sit down and he had to explain to his mother all these things. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Now she has a witness. Right. Mm -hmm. Can you say the same thing for people that say that to you? That are stuck in that mood? Can you give them a witness? We're not a bunch of denominational dum dums, okay? We don't just walk around and not be able to give people answers. Right. We need to be able to explain these things to people right. clearly and rightly divide the word. That's why we went through the doctrine of baptisms and everything and all these things, because they're important. And I know they're long sometimes. I understand that. But they're important. Amen. Very important. Right. By the way, even if we were to agree that 1 Corinthians 14 refers to a private prayer language, it would not be something that could be learned or imitated. Right. Whatever is described in 1 Corinthians 14 is a divine miracle. But this is contrary to the Pentecostal charismatic practice whereby people are taught to speak in a prayer language. Right. You know, there's a, there's a lot. I'm going to stop right now. There's, there's a bunch of questions that people have, and I don't want to go through all these with you just because of time. But there's a bunch of questions that people try to, after you teach all this, that they come up with. And David Cloud put some great biblical answers in here. And they're all kind of answered in the study that we just did. But, um, you know, but there's some good ones. And if you want those emailed to you, I can email it. Maybe I'll do like a separate, I don't know, something on it sometime. But, you know, um, I think this covers it mostly. Okay, I think it covers it exhaustively enough. Go back and listen to it. You're going to... You're going to need to um, understand that there, there is one thing that I think I should go over before I quit here, because I think this is really, let's see here. Well, no, that's okay. I'll, I'll wait. There's, there's just some speculation about 1 Corinthians 14, 14 that people try to, you know, try to come up with and try to say, and... Basically, what you have is a bunch of people that don't that they don't understand the scriptures and they're looking for feelings. Right, right. And they want the feelings. They want the emotional roller coaster of it. That's why they leave Baptist churches. Now, I will tell you, there are a lot of Baptist churches that are dry. Yep. And I can understand why people don't want to sit there and listen to that because they are so dry that they don't ever. That guy never raises his voice. He never gets excited. Doesn't even seem like he even believes what he's saying. I understand that. I've seen that before. So that's why they go to some of the charismatic churches and they, they see that excitement moving of the life, spirit right? and all this stuff. But you know what? You know what's more than all that nonsense of speaking in tongues, all that stuff? Go out to the street with me. I'll show you some fun. All right. Yeah. Amen. You want to get excited for the Lord? Right. You want to do something for God? Hey. Then you get out there in those streets right. and you preach the word of God because God said he chose the foolishness of preaching, not tongue speaking, to save them that believe. Hey. Right. You, have, you have people that are majoring on minor things. Things that were done away with. What does the Bible say about the gift of tongues? That it would cease. Yep. Right. 
that the gift would cease. You have the scriptures now. You don't need that. They can be translated in any language. You don't need a miraculous sign to the Jews anymore. The Jews have their sign. It was given and it was rejected. And now individual Jews can be saved by the grace of God. The same way Gentiles are saved by the grace of God. Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yep. All right. So I hope that makes some sense to you. I hope you understand some of the things we talked about there about tongue speaking, how it's just it's not what they say it is. It has nothing to do with what charismatic the charismatic movement. It's a perversion of the gift. The true gift was assigned to Israel. It was assigned to unbelievers. It was used for a, te in a temporary purpose and it was finished. The purpose was fulfilled. The, the apostles had to have those apocalyptic signs to show people. We're going to talk about that on Sunday. I'm going to explain that a little bit better on Sunday as far as the signs and wonders that had to take place yep. for the Jews to believe. Right. They, they, they had to see it to believe it. That's how they, they were. You know? So anyway, I hope that makes sense. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I pray that you bless us now. Thank you, Lord, for the truth. And thank you, Lord, that we can go through your word and we can see the truth. And Lord, that there's so many false teachings concerning the gift of tongues. It was a temporary gift to your church for a purpose and for a time. And then it was finished and it was fulfilled. And we're no longer children tossed to and fro. We're no longer children that are looking to play with gifts and toys that do not compare to the permanent gifts and the word of God that you've given us. Help us, Lord, to cling to this book and this book alone for the truth and the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, for the truth that we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.